Oh yeah, there we go, look at that. They are all fish. <laughs> Using your sound, I've seen it on the down scan, free sport at eight foot down, and she scoffed it. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be up on the rock in a minute. And that is the result of cracking jewfish. I got a little bit more drag. It's gonna try to jump the rock again. Don't. Here's the technology that you've got because it results in more of these and more Excuse fish. Me. So a lot of people ask how do you use a Simrad sounder or how do you use structure scan to try and find the fish. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it when obviously scanning a large rock area or any sort of large bit of structure that you can physically see and you're going to take the boat along nice and slow on the outside of the rock and then you're going to pinpoint fish that are hard against the rock or sitting out, Just it just varies. So I'll run along and I'll show you some images and I'll spot some fish and then hopefully turn that into some, into some results. All right, as you can see, we have a large rock that is poking out of the water. It's a pretty well-known spot. And what we're going to do, we're going to mooch along the outside of it and mark fish that are schooled up around it. As you can see straight away on the down scan, we've got fish marking up. And you've got the rock to the right hand side. And then obviously out to the left, you've got the mud. Now these bars indicate the distance from the center of the hull to the outside. So that's 20 feet, that's 40 feet, and that's 60 feet. I find 60 feet is a good comfortable range where you get good clarity and you can pinpoint the fish quite accurately. So as you can see, we're moving along slowly with the Minn Kota, scanning the rock. You can see a little bit of an indent there. Where obviously the mud comes in on, and then that's the rock area and then as it comes up into the shallows. Hopefully as I come along here, we should mark some fish. All right, there we go. So, see those guys there? Little grains of rice. Not sure what they are. They're fish, but they're only small fish. Well, we're looking for a large, a lot larger grains of rice, as we call it, and they'll have a large shadow off them. Oh, there's a fish in the down scan. Again, the rocks to our right. You got sand to the left, rocks to your right, sand to the left. All right, here we go. See on the right hand side in here, all these little grains of rice, and then you've got the shadows off them. They're all fish. So they are all directly right there in that pocket in the rocks. As you can see, you've got a nice groove, obviously the rock shelf. shelf. And then they're all fish, all stacked in there with shadows and amongst them. Now they're off the bottom and they're moving around because the shadow is away from the grain of rice. If the shadow is touching the grain of rice, it means they're directly on the bottom. But there's a bit of a distance between the shadow and the grain of rice. So they're up and they're moving around. They're not bad sized fish, they could be jewies or barra. It's a bit hard to tell when they're moving around like that. When they're stationary, it's a lot easier to pinpoint them. There you go. We've got. Oh, look at that. Cast out to your left, Dad. That is a large school of fish out to your left. You can see them all. All those shadows. Oh, yeah. There we go. Look at that. They are all fish. So that means they are directly there. As you can see, you got the 20-foot line and the shadows. So they're within an us and 20 foot of the rock, of the boat. Jesus. All right, let's see if we can convert them to eat. Can't go too hard because they're not the best hooks. I know. God, look at that big jellyfish. What do you reckon, Dewey or Barra? It's like a head shake, like Dewey. Got a bit of pull. Yeah. Uh, no. Let him dust ya. Yeah, I know you can't get too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> They're those fish in the sounder, so using the Simrad to slowly scan along the edge of the rock, then pinpointing the fish and then casting at them. In this case, it was about your second cast. Second cast. Oh, oh come out, baby. That's a stick. Mm hmm. You'd either hook the bar or a dewy. A dewy. 
It's pretty hard to tell the difference between a bear and a jig and the sando as they got both got big paddle tails and the same sort of silhouette, so they look fairly similar. There you go. Oh, oh Dewey. Dewey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at the size of it. Got a bad back, Shane. Yeah, slide him up. Oh, slide him up the front. <laughs> How's that second cast? There you go. Use the technology to find the fish, and that is the result of cracking Jewfish. Tin ass Steve Campaign. <laughs> <laughs> He's on again. <laughs> Stevie Wonder. Way over there. All I need now is it to jump. Hmm. So I mean, they're moving around quite quite fast, like they're not staying stationary, so they're a little bit harder to image to see what sort of species they are, but they're, they're decent sized fish, so they're definitely either bar or jewies. Doing the same as that other one, I think. Yeah, and seeing that it hasn't come up yet, quite a good chance that it's a dewy. Giving the new beast a bit of a workout anyway. Hmm. This is the new Revo 4 beast. It has 14 kilo of drag. But at the moment, he's only got to go on about probably two kilo yeah. drag because we're using vibes. I wish I could have 14. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's going to be up on the rock in a minute. That is in there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you see him flash there on the is. surface. Is it a Dewey or Barra? I think you got a Barra, Dad. No, it's uh, a Dewey. Dewey. Look at it coming straight back on the surface. Whoa. I reckon it ran into the rock. Rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a little bit smaller, this one. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Yeah. There you go, once again, using the Simrad, spotting the fish, using the Minn Kota, pulling up. And that's the result. Come on, baby. Support his weight so you don't hurt him. Oh, listen to that grunting. Got that plies there, mate. Listen to that. Unreal. That's how they actually talk to each other. Yeah. Work, Stevie Wonder. Okay. All right. What are we back? Get my bogus back out of him. Spear him straight back. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Tinas, I call him. <laughs> but he continues to do it every year. All right. So that's two fish straight away. We are fishing the turn of the high tides, so the turn of the tide is always the best time to fish, either the high or low as it seems to be an indication when they're going to feed. But now we're going to come back to where we were. And again, continuing to scan along the right hand side to where we find them. Oh, look at that. Steve, right to your right, just right there. Look at that for a school of fish. So they're pretty much from underneath the boat all the way out to about 27 feet to our right. So that's a school of fish that have just come directly past the back of the boat. The old boys cast back there and see how we go. And you can use your, um, definitely, if you haven't got any structure to look at, so if you're looking at submerged structure that you can't physically see, then you definitely need to use your, your GPS. But you can easily just mark something by pressing on there, then hitting mark. So if you see fish, there you go, there's a couple fish coming through now. If you see fish like that, I can go press, mark. But I'm not going to do it because it'll show the coordinates where we are. But Small on the edge of the right. All right, go to your right hand side now, Steve. Right. So directly there, yep. same spot. They're sitting that same little, oh wow. Right there. So that's right there. All those fish are right there. <laughs> there you go, so we just marked those fish. I literally just pointed out, put the GoPro down, cast straight in there. <laughs> and on the drop, I'm pretty sure we got another Dewey because it hasn't jumped and it's a- Head shakes? Oh yeah. But she's smoking me some of that. I got a little bit more drag. It's gonna try to jump the rock again. Don't get out of there. Oh, and this is on the actual black and gold shimmer shad. I'm using the Revo rocket, 10 to 1 ratio, 11 kilos of drag. Oh. Oh. They know where to go. <laughs> I 
Everyone's got the technology nowadays. Everyone's got strikes to scan. Use it to your advantage like we are here. Like, if we didn't have it, you'd just be aimlessly driving along casts and randomly. But we're actually moving along, pinpointing fish, casting at them. <laughs> and this is definitely going to be... Oh, it's going to be the third duty in about 10 minutes of being here. It's not always like this though. You can cast with them for days and they won't eat, but... Ah, uh, colour-wise, at the moment the water is quite clean, so we've gone more natural approach. So I've got black and gold. Tell me, old boy, what colour? That's like a green. Yeah, it's a Just natural. Natural, not too bright, not in your face. If you're in the cleaner water, you'll find, not all the time, but I find that your more natural colours work. The dirtier the water is, the brighter the lure you want to use. That's always generally the basic. There we go. Nice, yeah. Dewey. There he is. Oh, a hook just popped out of its face then. Look at that. on its face. Yeah, Berkeley Shimmer Shad, black and gold. Across the forehead. You want to support the weight. <laughs> there you go, use, use the technology that you've got because it results in more of these and more getting, fish. Get in the water. And what I'm doing, I'm just moving along, moving on the rock, always keeping a close line on the, on the simrad and, you know, so I know exactly where the fish are. You're better off casting lure in front of fish than just casting it randomly, so. The better you can pinpoint the fish using the sand up, the more your lure's gonna be in front of their face, the more chances you've got. All right, what I did then, I was standing at the rear of the boat. Come around here, I'll show you what I just seen seen that see that up? you go right in that means that was directly underneath the boat and I free spooled it straight underneath the boat so straight down where I've seen it on the down scan and then I popped onto another good size Dewey so I'm not just using this the left and right scan I'm using also using my down scan so when you pass directly over a fish that's a lot easier to indicate because you know it's right there <laughs> and that was pretty cool because on the second hop it got crunched but yeah, that's another perfect indication of using a sounder. Constantly, you know, I always keep on, always keep on checking the sounder because if I was 15, 20 seconds later on looking at that fish, I would have missed it. And I wouldn't have been out of drop. Oh, man. I think they're all about a metre, so. Yeah, another good fish. You want the best side scan technology and fish finding capabilities? Simrad. Simple. Good fish. Pity they weren't. Fish. Pity they weren't barrow, Shane. All right, I'll take them. For a lot of people, Shane, down south, it's a fish of a lifetime. That's it. Well, that that vibe is scoffed. Pliers. What grip should I say? Look at that. Get right in close. That's the shimmer shad down the hatch. Another beautiful jewfish. I go like absolute freight trains once again. Using a sounder, seen it on the down scan, free sported eight foot down, and she scoffed it. <laughs> <laughs>